Hi there, and welcome to Aurelian Math. We're going to look at the limit definition of the derivative. This video follows directly from the video where we did the limit definition of the tangent slope. And the reason is we have a secant line here, which goes through two points, AB. We see that as point B moves towards point A along the curve, gets closer and closer, that the purple secant line turns into the red tangent line. So we have our big concept, which says as point B moves towards point A, the secant slope turns into or becomes closer to the tangent slope. And another name for a tangent slope is derivative. So here we have some information about tangent lines that we need to proceed before we get the derivative. First of all, a tangent line is a line that a continuous and smooth curve looks like when we zoom in far enough at a point. So if we let a be the point of tangency where we zoom in, and we have that the function f is continuous, no holes, jumps, vertical asymptotes, or oscillations, and the graph has to be smooth, no corners or sharp, abrupt turns, then uh, we will have a derivative. So we think if the function isn't continuous, we can't zoom in somewhere. There's not a point on the graph where we could zoom in and have connected points on either side. Also, if the function isn't smooth, then when we do zoom in far enough, the graph won't look like a single tangent line with a finite slope. So we want to make sure that we get a single tangent line we want to make sure that the tangent line has a finite slope, and we want to make sure that both of those things are true, because it's not okay to have a single tangent line with an infinite slope, for example. Let's take a look at a couple of parent functions that talk about being continuous, but not smooth or having a finite slope. So here's the first one. If we zoom in far enough at the origin on the absolute value of x function, we never get a single tangent line. Here we end up getting two tangent lines, a left one and a right one. And as x approaches 0 from the left, the tangent slope approaches negative 1. And as x approaches 0 from the right, the tangent slope approaches positive 1. So the left and right hand slopes, or the left and right hand derivatives, are finite, but they're not equal. And so we can look at this as our case number 1 if you want, the first type of function where the derivative doesn't exist for a corner. And furthermore, we see that the derivative of a corner is a function that has a discontinuity. So the original function is continuous but not differentiable or smooth, and the derivative function has a jump discontinuity. So let's take a look at the next case. The next case is when we have a single tangent line when we zoom in far enough, but that when we zoom in the tangent line is vertical and the slope of a vertical line is infinite. In this case, the infinity for the slope, if I just turn this off, um, is positive infinity, because if we back up a little bit, we see that the function is always increasing, which means that the derivative or tangent slope is always positive. So from the left, if you can see my cursor here, that's the origin. From the left of the origin, as x approaches 0 from the left, we have positive slopes that are getting um, the line is getting more and more vertical, so the tangent slope is approaching infinity. And on the other side, we have still a positive or increasing line, and so the tangent slope is positive infinity. So this is a case where we have a single derivative or a single tangent slope of positive infinity, but it's a failing to be a finite value. So in the case of the vertical tangent, we have one tangent line with infinite slope, and therefore the function fails to have a derivative. And when we connect over here, we get the derivative of that function. Um, we can work out the derivative of x cubed, or sorry, the cube root of x. Um, without working out the algebra yet, we can see that the derivative graph is going to look like this, and it has a vertical asymptote. More about these parent functions later. The third and final type of function, then, is called a cusp. And in the cusp function, we have y equals x to the 2 thirds. And we see that the function turns around, so the derivative or the tangent slopes change, in this case, from negative to positive values. And when we zoom in far enough, we don't get a single tangent line, just like in the corner case. And also, like in the vertical tangent case, if we zoom in far enough, we get a tangent line that is vertical. So if we go back to a regular zoom view here with the axes, we see that we have a vertical line whose slope is undefined, in this case infinite, but we have both a decreasing tangent line, or series of tangent lines, as well as increasing. So the function decreases means that the tangent slope or derivative is negative, and we have a negative infinity slope 
from the left side of the origin, and we have a positive infinity slope on the right side of the origin. So this third and final case is called the cusp, and it's really as bad as it can get. The tangent slope fails both to be a single value, because we have two different tangent lines, and the slope fails to be finite. When we take the derivative of such a function, we get another discontinuous graph, and it's the type of discontinuity that is as badly behaved as possible, where the heights are both infinite and unequal. So y approaches a height on the red graph of negative infinity, as x approaches 0 from the left, and y approaches a height of positive infinity as x approaches 0 from the right. So now if we consider a continuous and smooth function, like y equals f of x here, and zoom in at the point of tangency a with coordinates little a comma f of a, and we let our second point, the secant, the second point on the secant line b, move towards point A. I'm going to label point B as x comma f of x. Then we know that the tangent slope is equal to the limit as the x-coordinate of the second point approaches um, the x-coordinate of the first point of tangency of the secant slope expression. And our secant slope expression is delta y over delta x. And so when we calculate delta y over delta x, we end up getting that the, uh, the tangent slope is equal to f prime of a, which is the limit as x approaches a, of f of x minus f of a all over x minus a. Now often people think that that formula is um, special and unique, but in fact it's really not. It's just all about how we label the picture. So if I choose to come up with new coordinates for point B, say a plus h, where h is some horizontal change from point B to point A, or vice versa, then I can come up with a new secant slope and therefore a new tangent slope as the limit of that secant slope. Now in this case I'm going to take the a plus h x-coordinate of point b and approach the x-coordinate of point a. And just like this we're an equal sign where I could subtract a from both sides and get h equal to zero, I end up getting that h approaches zero for the limit. And then I have my delta y over delta x which gives a new version of the tangent slope also known as the derivative. So those last two versions were possibilities where the tangent point is fixed, but I might want to come up with the tangent slope at many different points, and so I want my point of tangency to have variable coordinates. So now if I choose the coordinates of point A to be x comma f of x, and make my point B variable with respect to that, I give that point B new coordinates of x plus h comma f of x plus h, then I have that my tangent slope at point A, or my derivative at point A, is defined as f prime of x, and it's going to be given as the limit as x plus h approaches x, or h approaches 0, of delta y over delta x. And from the labeling, we can see what delta y and delta x are, and we come up with this final expression. So these are just three variations on the theme for the limit definition of the derivative. The two red ones give us numerical values of specific tangent line slopes, at specific points of tangency, whereas the blue one gives us a formula for any tangent slope once we substitute the x-coordinate in. In particular, if we substitute x equal to a, we'll get the version that we saw over here. And furthermore, if we make a substitution where this denominator h is equal to this, x minus a, which is equivalent to the substitution of x equal to a plus h, we can go between these two versions. So there's lots of variations on the theme, uh, these will get us through a lot of the scenarios that we need to work with. So if you like the video, click like, leave me a comment in the box below, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for checking out Raylene Math.